the Pentagon has awarded a $42 million contract to build a standoff weapons complex on Guam. Granite Obayashi JV of Watsonville, California was selected from three applicants. Under the contract, Granite Obayashi JV will construct the complex for the U.S. Air Force at Gijo, the southernmost point of Guam, the U.S. island territory in the western Pacific Ocean. The announcement said, the work to be performed provides for construction of an adequately sized and configured missile maintenance and assembly complex for loading, unloading, transferring, storing, testing, and preparing missiles for operational use. As per reports, U.S. Department of Defense DoD, expects the work to be completed by March 2023. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes why the new Standoff Weapons Complex SWC, at Guam should worry China. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by the free-to-play military vehicle combat game War Thunder. We talk a lot about military vehicles on this channel, but what about trying them out for yourself? In War Thunder, you can choose from more than 1,200 playable vehicles from the 1930s to the 1990s and go to battle on more than 80 theaters of war. You can fly aircraft, helicopters, drive tanks, and command ships of all types and sizes, which have been carefully recreated from their real-world counterparts. It's available as a free download on PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One with cross-platform support. So grab your friends and give it a try. All viewers of Defense Updates that register using the link in the description below will also get a free premium tank, aircraft, or ship and three days of premium account time as a bonus. Guam's location is strategic in nature and provides the U.S. military an excellent foothold in the Asia-Pacific. It can be used as a launch pad by the U.S. military to initiate a campaign. The Chinese military has developed strategies and weapons to address this situation. One such example is the DF-26 ballistic missile. The DF-26 has a range of 4,000 kilometers or 2,500 miles and is thought to be designed to conduct precision nuclear or conventional strikes against ground and naval targets. The missile is referred to by netizens as the Guam Express or Guam Killer. People's Liberation Army Air Force recruitment video last year even showed bombers launching a mock attack on Guam. The head of Indo-Pacific Command, Admiral Phil Davidson, said during an online forum organized by the Missile Defense Advocacy Alliance in September, there are billions of dollars in defense capability on Guam. There needs to be some investment in defending that. Standoff weapons are missiles or bombs which may be launched from a distance sufficient to allow attacking personnel to evade defensive fire from the target area. Typically, they are used against land and sea-based targets in an offensive operation. The name is derived from their ability to engage the target while standing off outside the range at which the defenders are likely to engage the attacker. Standoff weapons include cruise missiles, short-range ballistic missiles, and glide bombs. These will allow precision strikes from long ranges. For example, standoff missiles launched preemptively from Guam could be used to neutralize DF-24 ballistic missile launchers located on the Chinese mainland. As per the official release, the state-of-the-art complex will make Anderson the first installation in Pacific Air Forces to support a new strategic force projection initiative, enhancing training capabilities with Department of Defense partners in the region. AFIMSC DET 2, the design and construction manager, will manage the project with support from NAFFAC PAC, the design and construction agent, and the 36th wing for construction of the new complex. Construction will expand the existing missile assembly shop and add a new powered trailer maintenance facility supporting the operation of self propelled trailers. Supporting infrastructure will include upgrades to transportation routes with heavy-duty pavement to accommodate increased traffic volume. The project will also include a new airfield entry gate and upgraded utilities to the new facilities. The complex is the first PACAF MILCON project 
to implement the new cybersecurity risk management requirements for building systems controls. Colonel Dave Norton, director of AFCEC's Facility Engineering Directorate, said, This contract award marks another important step required to support the Air Force mission. Continued cooperation and technical expertise of AFCEC and AFIMSC DET 2 professionals will help ensure the installations are equipped with right sized and modern infrastructure with a long lifespan at the overall lowest life cycle cost. Colonel David K. Aragon, 36th Wing Vice Commander, said, The new standoff weapons complex will be another advancement in the 36th Wing's mission of expanding combat capability from the forward edge of the Indo Pacific. Its support to our current and future missions will increase our effectiveness as a lethal fighting force. Naval Facilities Engineering Systems Command Pacific Project Manager Wayne Acosta, in a statement, said the contract was a top priority and awarded ahead of schedule and under budget. Though the U.S. Air Force has not permanently positioned a bomber squadron at Anderson since last year, it periodically sends bomber task forces of B-52s and B-1B Lancers on strategic deterrence missions there to demonstrate its ability to respond quickly to threats in the Western Pacific. The official release indicated that the 36th Wing at Anderson Air Force Base provides a staging platform and supply base for air and space forces deployed in the Asia Pacific. It's also stated that the wing is the steward of the largest munitions stockpile in Pacific Air Forces, which it provides to deployed combat aircraft during wartime or contingency operations. It's clear that there's a lot at stake. Viewers may note that a range of missiles which were earlier restricted can now be deployed by the U.S. since it's withdrawn from the INF Treaty. Guam is one of the important pieces in this larger game since it's pretty close to China. It makes sense to have the standoff weapons complex at the base as it will surely be at the crosshair if hostilities break out. China has militarized several islands in the area and has even deployed advanced missile systems like YJ-12 anti-ship missile as well as HQ-9 surface-to-air missile. In the last four to five years, the situation in the region has really heated up mainly due to Chinese provocations and the U.S. military aligning to counter the challenge. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.